Thank you, Dr. Mafitz. Can the MC qualify to stay in the, to enter the quiz as well? Okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, before we start off, uh, <clears throat> my words of uh, Benjamin Franklin, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I will learn. So please make this an interactive session. There'll be a lot of question and answer session. So make this interactive and get the most out of it today. And there's also a book to be won. Okay, so uh, let's proceed on to the first symposium. I'd like to invite uh, the chairperson of the first symposium, Dr. Ling Kuang Eng, who's a senior consultant anesthetist from Aradamansara Medical Center, Ramsey Saim Darby Hospital. He's also a former lecturer of University of Malaya and uh, instrumental in establishing regional anesthesia in University of Malaya and also one of the pioneers of the special interest group of regional anesthesia. A warm welcome to the uh, first chairperson who will chair the symposium on blocks for major joint surgeries. Let's put our hands together. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's good, uh, so nice to see so many of you here today. Um, we are, our program today is actually quite bad, so we will start uh, our first session without delay. Um, the first session, we are talking about a block of for major joint surgery. We had two speakers here. Uh, first speaker would be Dr. Shinichi Sakura, and the second one would be Dr. Vechara. Um, first, I will introduce uh, uh, Dr. Shinichi Sakura to you. Uh, Dr. Shinichi Sakura is a professor from the Shimani University Hospital, uh, Izuno City, Japan. Uh, Dr. Shinichi Sakura has been with us for the past uh, four years of the RA Asia. And uh, he mentioned that he will introduce himself more, so I will keep it short here. Um, so let's welcome Dr. Shinichi. Thank you for the kind of introduction. Uh, 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 good morning. Uh, this is my third visit to this beautiful country, and this is my first visit to this unique city. Uh, 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 I'm very glad to be here uh, to speak to you today. And uh, my name is Shinji Sakura, as uh, Lin told you. And uh, uh, I'm an anesthetist working at Shimane University Hospital in Japan. Uh, for those of you who don't know where Shimane is, Shimane is here. Uh, this is Japan, I came from right here. My town is uh, very small, uh, not like Tokyo, uh, uh, but quite, quite laid back. And we have a number of things that we are proud of in, proud of in Shimane. Uh, for example, this is, this is a castle nearby. Uh, in three weeks, this castle gets surrounded by beautiful cherry blossoms like this. And uh, we also have a big old Shinto shrine uh, in my town which is uh, one of the uh, most prestigious shrines in Japan and attracts a number of tourists, uh, especially women, because uh, the god there helps find their ideal soul, soulmate, you know. Oh. Prince Charming. <laughs> and uh, in addition, we have a, a fantastic hot spring resort and delicious food that you could really enjoy. So please visit, visit us someday. Okay, turning attention to medicine. Oh, okay. Shoulder joint surgery is thought to be one of the most invasive uh, orthopedic procedures. Among shoulder surgeries, rotator cuff repair is performed uh, most frequently. Uh, rotator cuff uh, uh, consists of supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis muscles. And one of the, uh, when, the uh, when a tendon of these muscles is severely torn, uh, rotator cuff repair is conducted. Uh, and, uh, okay. Uh, small rivets called uh, suture tendons are often used to uh, help uh, connect, uh, attach the tendon to the bone and cause severe uh, pain. Now that provides sensory innovation of the shoulder joint, uh, uh, main, uh, mostly supraclavic, uh, scapular nerve, and axillary nerve. Uh, other nerves that contribute to the sensation in the shoulder joint include pectoral, lateral pectoral nerve, uh, muscular cutaneous nerve, and supraclavic nerve. As you know, the brachial plexus 
is a complex uh, uh, network of nerves consisting of uh, the ventral lamina of spinal nerves through, uh, from C5 to T1, and the uh, scapular and actually nerves are the branches of uh, C5 and C6. So when you want to reduce the pain in the shoulder joint, uh, you need to block the afferent nerves here. So uh, the interscaling uh, approach to the brachial plexus block is the best choice. Actually, interscaling brachial plexus block has been used uh, for soldier surgery for many years. Uh, uh, however, uh, there is a uh, relatively uh, relative uh, paucity of high level of randomized control trials addressing the benefits of uh, shoulder, uh, benefits of interscaling inter, uh, inter brachial plexus block uh, in shoulder joint. Uh, this is not a comparative study, uh, but uh, can tell us how patients feel about the perioperative uh, management with uh, interscaling block. And uh, procedures uh, range, uh, you know, uh, widely range from major surgery like rotator cuff to minor ones. But uh, you know, uh, patient, uh, uh, over, actually over 99% of the patients uh, felt uh, satisfaction uh, with the treatment of uh, anesthesia with uh, interscaling uh, plexus block. So that is good. Then why do so many patients feel uh, satisfied? This systematic review uh, searched for studies uh, between two, uh, 1950 and 2012 and uh, evaluated the effects of inter interscaling brachial flux blocks in patients undergoing shoulder surgery. And they found that the use of an interscaling uh, brachial flux block resulted in significant decreases in post-operative pain scores and in the amount of supplemental analgesics and being cost effective, effectiveness, effective. So uh, the patient satisfaction may have resulted from uh, reduction in pain, uh, post-operative pain. Early mobilization is very important in uh, successful rehabilitation. Uh, post-operative pain uh, prevents uh, effective physiotherapy. So uh, decreasing post-operative operative pain with interscaling block theoretically uh, improves early rehabilitation. Uh, these uh, authors wanted to uh, prove this by comparing continuous uh, intercycle or blo inter interscaling blocks with uh, intravenous opioid injections. Uh, and they used a, a constant score to assess uh, functional disorders of the shoulder joint, uh, including pain, sleep disturbances, and the quality of the patient daily life activity. And they found that uh, the constant score decreased post-operatively uh, in both groups, but the decrease was uh, significantly less extensive in patients receiving uh, this block. However, when you look at, the, look at each category of the scores here, strength and range of motion were similar between the two analgesics, you know, between uh, intravenous opioids and the uh, interscaling blocks. So uh, that means a uh, significant difference in uh, constant score only resulted from lower degrees of pain uh, in the block group and superior analgesia uh, did not necessarily lead to uh, improvement of early rehabilitation in patients undergoing open shoulder surgery. So this, this is a little bit disappointing, but I believe that some of the blocks they did were uh, not working uh, properly because the block, uh, technique they used in this, uh, for this study uh, was not ultrasound guided. Still, we can see uh, patients receiving blocks reported lower degrees of pain intensity at rest and as well as during exercise for the first three post-operative days. 
this post-operative study uh, uh, was conducted to obtain data uh, for, from a large national uh, co cohort between 2007 and 2011. And the authors wanted to uh, see uh, how, how frequently uh, perioperative uh, uh, peripheral nerve blocks were added to general anesthesia in patients undergoing total shoulder uh, arthroplasty. And they also wanted to see if there were any differences in the risk for uh, major perioperative complications and uh, mortality uh, between patients who received the block and uh, those who did not. And they found that, uh, they found that, uh, 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 they found similar, uh, you, know, you know, out of, out of more than over 17,000 patients, 20 percent, only 20 percent received the peripheral nerve blocks. This, this is not, uh, this is not good. But still, uh, they found that, uh, and uh, they also found that uh, there was no difference in the in the uh, uh, in the in the mortality and the uh, uh, instance of major mortal morbid, uh, major complication like this, uh, regardless of the block. Uh, so again, there must be some uh, technical or problems in this study too by using traditional techniques. So we need to improve the te uh, quality of the block by using ultrasound. So first, let me start with, let me talk about the uh, single shot first. Interscaling block, uh, the cervical nerve roots are sandwiched between the anterior and inferior scale muscles, which correspond to the lateral edge of the sternocleidal muscle muscles. The large vessels are usually outside the group and can serve as a landmark uh, for this block. Uh, this approach also blocks the supraclavicular nerve and the phrenic nerve. And, uh, and most of the time. The reason why you can block the supraclavicular nerve is that uh, this nerve uh, runs behind and uh, comes out uh, from the edge of the sternocleidal muscle. muscle. Uh, uh, so. But uh, I, I think that this is actually good. With this block, you could actually provide anesthesia on the shoulder, on the skin over the shoulder as well. So that this is good. Uh, position the patient, uh, position the transducer this way, and you can observe an image like this. Uh, you can identify the sternal clad muscle, the muscle superficially, and deep to it, uh, the anterior and the middle scaling muscle. And uh, you can uh, see uh, three nerve roots here that, that are uh, dark or hypoechoic in the interscaling groove. And uh, you can also identify carotid artery, which is not seen here, and the interjugular as well. So then you need to in, in, insert a needle, but where, where should you put the needle? So this is the ideal uh, spread uh, of local anesthetic after injection. So this is a paper showing the uh, cervical nerve roots and the proper location uh, for the needle tip. Uh, the labeling, labelings in this picture show that these superficial two are C5 nerve roots, and this one is C6, and this one is C7. However, uh, the labeling uh, turned out to be wrong later. Actually, this, this is C5, and these two are C6, and this is C7. Now, recently, Franco clearly showed in his uh, Caraba study results that the C5 uh, root is uh, significantly smaller than either C6 or C7. And also, C6 uh, uh, root uh, split uh, quite early uh, like this. So this is C5, and this C6 is larger and split earlier. So are you going to advance the needle space here or space here after the bifurcation? No, I'd like to point a needle tip underneath the C6 because there is a wide open space here. But a problem has still come up, you know? 
uh, that is, you cannot, con uh, you cannot uh, uh, steer the needle away from the nerve uh, all, the way, uh, all the time, even if you try to. This, uh, for example, this is uh, Liu and his colleagues conducted a prospective observation study using 257 patients and who, who received ultrasound guided interscarin of supraclavicular block. And they, uh, in this study, they uh, placed a needle tip only adjacent to the target nerve. And after checking the video later, uh, they surprised to see 17% uh, of the patient had received uh, Rokanath intraneurally. So uh, intraneural injection occurs before night. Fortunately, no one developed uh, clinical uh, nerve injury afterward. So it makes sense that some anesthesiologists have thought of a way to avoid uh, intentional intraneural injection by taking a more conservative approach, which is avoiding needle nerve contact. Uh, when Spence and colleagues conducted the endoscale uh, uh, block, they advanced the needle not only not not into the brachial cyst, but to, uh, you know, uh, outside of it, and inject the local anesthetic uh, in a space between the in middle scaling muscle and the brachial plexus cyst. Uh, they actually compare this conservative technique with conventional but aggressive technique that allows uh, injection within the cyst. And they found that their conservative technique uh, resulted in similar block onset times and block quality as compared to the conventional one. Uh, this uh, table shows the uh, percentage of patients uh, with normal sensation in these uh, four nerves after 10 minutes after the block. And the, you, as you can see, uh, the two techniques produce similar blocks. So you better to con uh, conduct this block conservatively. So I recommend that you advance the needle until the tip uh, barely past the fascia, but not inside the cheese. Another problem is injecting a, a certain amount of local anesthetic into, this, into the groove here, this way. You can also, you also block the nerve, uh, phrenic nerve running here like this. So Philip Gautier uh, injected a small amount of uh, 10 ml of radio contrast solution in the interscaling uh, spaces uh, and saw this medium spilled outside the groove and surface of the interscaling, uh, uh, anterior interscaling muscle, uh, anterior scaling muscle uh, where the phrenic nerve is. Researchers in Lausanne uh, conducted uh, this randomized study to uh, see if they can reduce the, re uh, uh, reduce the uh, instance of hemidiaphragmatic paresis by injecting anesthetic collateral to the brachial plexus sheath uh, compared with the conventional uh, intrafascial uh, fascial injection. And they, uh, they used uh, 20 ml of half percent of bupiacan and found that the, their intrafascial injection technique resulted in a significantly smaller reduction in the ventilatory function, uh, including these, uh, compared with the conventional technique. Uh, although, however, although oh, the block uh, fascia injection, uh, fascia, instructional fascia injection technique resulting in significantly slower onset, uh, both sensory and motor block. Both techniques, both injections produce similar analytic time course. Other nerves can be damaged too. Okay, this is an uh, ultrasound image showing the uh, dosal scapular nerves and the uh, long thoracic nerves. Dosal scapular nerve uh, comes uh, originated from C5 and long thoracic nerve from C5, C6, and C7. So, uh, in fact, these nerves can be seen quite frequently uh, when you sit. And uh, as you can see, when you uh, perform lateral approach, 
you need to be careful not to injure these nerves. Serious adverse events include epidural block, total spinal, and uh, permanent com uh, neurological complications. According to these case reports, uh, intercord injection, horizontal needle insertion technique, and uh, performing the block during general anesthesia were responsible for this, uh, you know, for the serious complications. So I would like to advise against conducting this block in an anesthetized uh, patient. So there is a question in the first place, whether this uh, you know, single block, uh, single uh, shot interscaling block uh, benefits the patient. Uh, so uh, the, the authors of this paper uh, analyzed the result of previous studies comparing a single shot interscaling block with no block, uh, general, general, uh, usually general anesthesia alone. Uh, this, and the no, uh, this shows uh, this shows uh, the in, uh, difference in pain intensity between the two glob blocks uh, for 48 hours after surgery. And below zero means uh, there a single injection, single shot ISB is better. And the above zero means worse. And they found, uh, they found that uh, for the first eight hours, pain intensity was lower in patient uh, who received the block. But after that, around 20 hours after surgery, uh, uh, probably because the anesthetic effect disappeared, uh, they had stronger pain than those who did not block, who did not receive block and uh, experiencing rebound pain. So we need to do continuous block. However, although the continuous block uh, can benefit patients uh, it may also cause serious consequences. This report described the most uh, shocking event that has happened in patients undergoing, uh, receiving a continuous uh, uh, interscaling block. Uh, the patient was a healthy 20-year-old male uh, who underwent uh, rotator cuff repair with general anesthesia. An uh, interscaling block was provided uh, before anesthesia uh, using a uh, single shot of Vecchine. And then a catheter was introduced uh, uh, through the needle and uh, advanced seven centimeters beyond the needle tip. At night of surgery, uh, an anesthesia resident visited the patient in the room and found that the uh, patient was fully awake, uh, complaining uh, uh, mild pain. So that the patient, so pa uh, the resident injected uh, bupiacans, uh, 10 ml through the catheter and left the room, left him uh, after a short stay. But in the next morning, the patient was found dead. Uh, so, and the post-mortem scan, CD scan revealed that the cattle tip was inside the canal, suggesting that the uh, patient had developed uh, total spinal anesthesia. So you can tell, you can easily tell the, uh, the problem, possible uh, problem in this case, uh, those are, uh, the block was performed with reading this approach, so that, uh, uh, which means uh, the cat needle was inserted medially, and the catheter was in that advanced seven centimeters beyond the needle tip, and the first bolus was injected through the needle, but not through the catheter, and the uh, first, uh, you know, oh, bolus injection through the catheter, uh, through the catheter was made without preceding infusion. So, uh, this uh, case report tells us that we need, we must observe a guideline like this when provide, uh, when we provide, when you provide a continuous uh, interscaling block. Uh, you should uh, uh, direct the needle laterally, needle laterally, and do not uh, advance the needle, uh, advance the catheter three centimeters, more than three centimeters beyond the tip. And the, the first bolus injection should be made through, should be made, injected uh, through the catheter, not through the needle. And you should uh, stay at the bedside for a long time after making a bolus. Uh, regarding the needle insertion, there are two techniques, actually, uh, outer plane and in plane techniques. So with outer plane technique, please do not advance the needle too deeply. I think uh, 1.5 center would be uh, enough. Uh, it is a bit better, it is better to place the needle tip 
on the lateral or posterior side of the group because most of the nerve, uh, sensory nerve fibers are on this side of the roots. If possible, you should observe the uh, catheter going like this under the outer sun. And it is strongly recommended that you use a down needle. Although some people feel against it, I, we actually conduct posterior approach a lot because with this approach, with this approach, the character can go through uh, thick muscles and can be secured uh, quite easily. So the uh, needle is uh, go, go, goes like this. Make sure that this, uh, the tip goes to the right place. Uh, here, the tip is positioned between C5 and C6, uh, which is actually okay. But I suggest you uh, aim the needle here, uh, where you have much wider open space, uh, which means underneath the C6 root. Okay. You need to push in the catheter farther while putting out the cap, putting the needle out. Uh, and because, uh, you know, the tip is going to draw back a little uh, post-operatively, even if you secure the catheter at the insertion site. Because uh, the neck is going to swell up after surgery because of the inflammation, something like that. Uh, contingent block does not always function. Uh, because of head and neck movement, uh, these character might, may be pulled out accidentally or migrate after insertion. And if it occurs, uh, the energetic effect may decrease. So it is very important to secure the character with tape as well as dressing or draping uh, because during operation, this area gets wet. As I said in the beginning, the shoulder is innervated mainly by uh, suprascapular uh, nerve and uh, axial nerve. So uh, blocking these terminal blank, uh, branches uh, should uh, provide some analgesia in the shoulder. For axial nerve block, you place the transducer on the posterior aspect of the upper, uh, proximal upper arm, like this, and uh, uh, you can see the humeral, uh, posterior circumflex, uh, humeral artery uh, between deltoid and teres minor and triceps muscle. Uh, the scapular nerve is right next to the artery. Oh, no, no, axillary artery. Axillary nerve is right next to the artery. Uh, to, uh, for scapular nerve block, uh, uh, you, need to, you should place the transducer on top of the back like this to observe the image like this. So you can see trapezius and supraspinatus muscle, muscles and uh, suprascapular uh, notch. And in the notch, you should expect to observe the uh, suprascapular artery uh, and, and uh, uh, the nerve is right next to the artery. Uh, however, I have to say that the combination of those two blocks uh, is not as effective as interscalene block. Uh, this uh, paper shows the result of a study comparing the uh, combined, uh, uh, you know, a combined, uh, compare the analgic efficacy of the combined block with interscaling inter block after arthroscopic uh, surgery, uh, including rotator cuff repair. And they found that uh, they used actually, uh, what can be? Oh, 15 ml of ropivacaine and 20 of uh, the same solution and that's, uh, for the interscaling block. And they found that the interscaling block uh, provided better quality pain relief at, uh, this way and uh, fewer adverse effects uh, for the first post-operative day. So uh, it's, it is fair to say that the combination block is suitable for pain only after main, minor uh, shoulder surgery. So finally, I want to say that when you conduct peripheral nerve blocks, you, you always have to strike a balance between these two, success and safe. Well, thank you very much for your attention.